Hi guys, my name is Maria and today I wanted to give you some tips. What art supplies to start with, especially if you're new to watercolors and you've never tried painting before, or even if you have been painting for a while but you need to upgrade some of your materials. So you're looking for a new paper or brushes or paints. So I'm going to start with watercolor paper because I believe watercolor paper is the foundation of your watercolor painting. This is where things can go wrong. And watercolor paper is really the most important when it comes down to watercolor painting. If you do have a good quality, professional grade watercolor paper, you can do so much more. Now, just because a company says it's a professional grade watercolor paper, that doesn't mean that you can do uh, what I, for example, do in my paintings. So I paint in layers but I also do lifting. Lifting up means when you're trying to remove uh, paint from the paper, so you're trying to add more highlights, so bring back the highlight, or you're just trying to create like a softer edge and so on. So there is papers out there that are professional grade, and they are. They are made professionally, they're very good quality, but for example, you can't add layers without lifting the previous layer. What does this mean is that, let's say, you're painting this landscape or seascape with me. If you were painting it on a paper that lifts up too easily, and I'll give you examples, Stratmore watercolor paper uh, 500 series lifts up very easily. The same with the Stonehenge Aqua and uh, some of the other papers. So the thing is that once you apply the first layer, you wait until that layer has dried and everything is dry, but then you're applying the second layer, you're going to lift up the previous layer and you won't be as successful at adding that additional layer to create that vibrancy. So I paint, for the most part, on Arches watercolor papers. I buy my watercolor papers in sheets. So Arches watercolor papers in sheets. But I do have blocks or pads as well. When I do, I just rip the page out of a block and I cut these into smaller sizes or just paint on a sheet. But I don't paint directly when that paper is in a pad or a block. When you do have a watercolor pad by Arches and it's cold pressed, I recommend to flip that paper and paint on the softer side. Because when I buy Arches sheets, 22 by 30, so sheets, the logo is on a softer side and that's the side to paint on. But this does not correspond to what you see in a pad, Arches pad, cold pressed, 140 pounds, for example. That's why when I flip that page in the pad, then it turns, okay, this is the correct side. So I have a whole bunch of sheets. These are just smaller sizes for much smaller projects. And these are actually Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, 300 pounds. I do like this paper, but the paper does lift up very easily. So I choose my papers wisely depending on what I am painting. This painting has been done on arches, rough 300 pounds. This painting has been done on arches cold press, 300 pounds. Both of these paintings are very vibrant in colors because I was able to apply layers. Another thing is your watercolor paints. What watercolor brand of paint do I recommend? I paint and I love Holbein watercolors. I have been painting with Holbein watercolors for the last three years. In between, I do have videos with Schmincke watercolors, for example, or some other brands, but 99% of the time, I use Holbein watercolors. I got really hooked on these paints. The company doesn't add Oxgall to their paints. What this means is that automatically their paints don't disperse as fast, they are easier to control. I prefer these because it's much easier to paint seascapes or landscapes. Of course, these paints are transparent. These are watercolors 
and if you do add quite a bit of water then they will disperse but the thing is that you do have that possibility of really controlling this paint it's just a matter of how much water you add to the paint i prefer tubes versus cakes or pants because these just last longer the thing about holbein paints is that the quality of the paint in cakes versus these tubes is actually the same i have a set of pants uh, already those are more like travel watercolors for me but the thing is that i still prefer these tubes just because uh, there is more of it and i always can squeeze that fresh paint that's already in, in liquid so i really recommend holbein watercolors especially if you are a beginner if you're a beginner these will help you to learn faster i started my youtube channel in 2016 and in 2017 is when i started to paint with holbein watercolors so you can see right away like how my paintings have improved since so paper is first and i recommend arches watercolor papers and then your paints are second i recommend holbein but of course there's no pressure you can choose whatever you prefer to paint with uh, this is just my opinion and another thing is i do use white gouache this is a permanent white color gouache is basically a watercolor but it's an opaque watercolor so you also use water with these and you just paint like with watercolors for the most part although they're very opaque so it's a little different style of painting but i do use this white gouache with my watercolor paintings here's an example of where i use this so instead of using art masking fluid for watercolors to preserve some of the hair i decided to add white gouache lines so as you see all that little hair hair that's actually white gouache that's white gouache so you have a choice of creating that little tiny hair either with masking fluid for watercolors or white gouache like i do i also use white gouache to create like that sea foam sometimes whenever i paint a seascape now talking about masking fluid this masking fluid is by holbein as well and it's a pen so it's much easier to squeeze the paint out and create fine lines. So I really recommend this and I love it. The thing about this masking fluid is that you really do have these fine lines and it dries gray so you can see it easily. If you haven't used this masking fluid for a while, then you just need to shake it really hard and squeeze it hard on a paper on a spur sheet of a watercolor paper just kind of like press it hard and it will start coming out i do use and recommend washi tape overall if you like to create a white frame such as here this is a white frame created by that washi tape i apply the washi tape uh, before I wet the paper or apply paint so this is at the beginning once I am done with a sketch if I have a sketch and these are my top 16 pigments by Holbein these are my most used watercolor pigments so I have yellow ochre quinacridone red burnt sienna van dyke brown neutral tint indigo fallow blue red shade cobalt blue we have sap green marine blue viridian hue iso yellow deep cadmium yellow pale oprah cobalt turquoise light and cobalt green there's few more but these are really my top 16 colors that i use most of the time i get a lot of questions about my palette this is not a porcelain palette this is a plastic palette and it's by richson and i buy these palettes from dickblick.com sometimes i see them on amazon the thing is that i have about like 10 of them sitting on my table because i switch through them so i don't want to waste the paint what i do after each painting is i wash these parts off but i don't wash away these big chunks of paint so i can save these for another painting so once i'm ready to choose my palette i go through these palettes and i decide okay this one has already some of these basic colors that i am going to need for my next painting so that's how i choose my next palette too and the last thing i have and i use uh quite a bit are these pencils so i do all my sketches i never trace i never do anything uh, like printing or anything like that and i'm trying to be the example because i know that sketching helps to get better in painting with watercolors i believe that it will help you to learn 
faster if you do your own sketches I really recommend that you do your own sketches I do provide sketches on patreon and the thing is that you can sketch still just by looking at my sketch you don't have to sketch from a reference photo if you don't feel comfortable yet but at least you're doing your own sketch this is how I learned faster so these are some of the main pencils that I have, Rotring, and then we have the Uni Kurutoga. You can buy these on Amazon. Another thing is this is just my eraser, so it's kind of like a pencil. I bought these erasers uh, from eBay actually, and they came uh, straight from Japan, and I love these. Actually, they are really useful. So these are my pencils, and this is the eraser. So I covered about the paper paints, and these are some of my main brushes that I use. I am going to have a separate video about my brushes and that's because I talk a little bit more about it uh, why I paint with the flat brushes and then I have a larger round brush and I have a liner brush so I am also showing like extra brushes that you can get as well but these are heritage series by Princeton and then this one is one of my main smaller brushes round zero velvet touch series by Princeton so it's going to be a separate video just so I can talk more about the brushes one last thing I just want to show you you this painting because it's very vibrant this is really done in layers and it really helps painting on arches because I would never be able to add so many layers if I was painting on some of the other papers this is actually a perfect example of all these brushes that I have here that I've used I used the flat brushes here to paint the sky I used a liner brush to paint the trees and the leaves I used a smaller brush like around three to paint the horses and then around zero for smaller details all these brushes just to paint this scenery thank you so much guys for your time i really hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe if you're interested to take some of my classes i have voiceover tutorials on patreon as well and to check out the list of available tutorials please go through the index on my website the link is www.mariamorjane dot com slash patreon dot html then the website address for patreon is www.patreon.com slash maria morjane i hope to see you there